All right, guys. Hello, my name is Garrett, and this is Sledstorm for the PlayStation One. Um, not to be mistaken with the one that came out for the PlayStation Two. It's also called Sledstorm. It's not Sledstorm Two or anything like that. So uh, this game came out in 1999 by Electronic Arts. Um, one of the first snowmobile racing games uh, released on console and the best racing game if i must say if you uh, grew up playing this game like i did you're probably most familiar with the uh open mountain championship mode of the game which is where you start out with like a really slow sled and uh each race you um earn cash and you can buy upgrades for your character and use that character in other modes of the game but the main thing you come away with is the storm sled, which is the um, fastest sled in the game. This is what it looks like. And uh, flex on you guys, I got all the storm sleds for every character. So they all pretty much perform the same um, with the storm sled. But uh, recent uh, testing, I found out that Jay and uh, Tracy actually have better handling for some reason even though it shows the same so so i'm gonna be going with jay because uh he was the guy i used to play with um when i was a kid i usually run with jackal but let's go with jay so for this category it's called the quick races open mountain no skips so we're doing all of the tracks that are featured in the open mountain championship but we're only doing them one time um uh, because in the championship mode, you would uh, do it in the daytime, the fog series, and at nighttime. So it's kind of repetitive. And it's like a slow, gradual, you start from, you know, get faster and faster. But in this mode, you start out going as fast as possible. Oh, I failed to mention, um, there is the 800cc, which is just as good. It just has better stability, um, and it is good for a technique called snaking that uh, I will go more into later but uh with the storm sled has faster acceleration worse stability but the acceleration helps you uh perform certain skips i mean not skips shortcuts in this game we're not doing skips um skips and titles uh, checkpoint manipulation or the use of a wall writing glitch um i'll show you guys the wall writing glitch if we have any time after but uh so if Setting up for this category, three laps, uh, um, time of day can be anything. You can drive in fog or night if you care to. Um, weather condition can be anything as well. So let's go ahead and load up Pine Valley for the first track. Also, this game has a banging soundtrack, but cannot play it because it's copyright. But Rob Zombie is the uh, national anthem of Sledstorm. So now that we got uh, it all loaded up, this uh, category is timed with in-game time. So um, time starts when we press restart. Uh, one thing I want to go into before we start, uh, most like most kart racing games, you can uh, perform like a boost off the start from holding you know, accelerate at a specific time, like Mario Kart and Crash Team Racing. Um, Sledstorm has it as well, but it's uh, the complete opposite of what you think. It's a hold, accelerate, and release at a specific time. Um, that's why it took us 21 years to discover this, because why would anybody think that would work? Um, I found it completely on accident. So uh, time will start uh, when I press restart. So everything is good. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and get started then. Three, two, one, go. So I'm gonna hold accelerate and release right as the one is below my character's shoulders. We'll get a boost off the start. Your top speed can get up to 103 miles per hour. So this is, uh, this is Pine Valley. There's not many crazy shortcuts here since it's the first track. Um, there's this one over here. Break through that ice. 
gear off to the left here instead of jumping across. So this game is all about good movement and trying to keep our sled rounded as much as possible. You can control the pitch and yaw of your sled in midair, making for really precise movements. As you can see, I kind of nosedive like that into the next turn. So I was mentioning snaking earlier, which is simply like holding forward right before um, certain slopes so that you can clip through the top of them, resulting in less air time. That was a snake right there. Um, it's pretty hard to notice if you haven't played the game before. Um, but the risk of snaking too hard is that you could go too far into the slope and hit like the backside polygon and it can like bounce you backwards. We call that getting clipped. Um, it happens quite often. So I'm trying to avoid that and at the same time. Oh, someone just crashed. I'm, that doesn't happen very often. Who was that? I think that was Surge. Makes sense. <laughs> He's actually one of the slowest characters. So since this is in game time, we don't have to be fast with menu and we can just go straight to the next one. So on to Kodiak Canyon. Not one of my favorite tracks, but it has some fun movement to it. So the perfect start here, we have to kind of veer to the right first before we turn. Looks really sloppy, but if you don't do that, you'll just flip over. Try to avoid that sign, but yeah, all the objects in this game can bonk you backwards or to the left or right if you hit them right. Avoid the snowman. Alright, we're gonna fall off here, but that's okay. Fly past the bear, jump across here. Game is lots of. <laughs> there's no dead time. Like, if you're not holding left or right, you're holding forward to maintain traction with the snow. So, we'll go up here. Again. So, on the second lap, I'm going to try to do a shortcut called the early cave jump. We avoid that turn that I took to jump into the cave. So, let's jump across here. They're right here. Nice. Barely made it though. That tree does not have collision. Sometimes. <laughs> There's like one like specific side that has collision off to the right. Sometimes it'll sometimes it'll help you, but most of the times it throws you out. So no no two laps are ever the same. Your angle of entry. Oh, hit the snowman there. That's fine. For the third lap, I'm not going to go for the ECJ. Really only saves about like half a second. It was a really good cave jump. Oh, we took that a little too wide. That's okay. On to the next track, we have Hard Pack. And uh, it truly is, um, it's hard. It, the name does its justice. <laughs> A lot of precise movement here. So I gotta be very careful with the perfect start here. Gear off to the left here. Really hard to avoid that rock. Over the log jump here into the hairpin turn. Not bad. Um, you want to try to be as much to the left side so that you can get that apex turn into it. Go across the water here so that we have a better entry point into the shortcut off to the right. Slow down a little bit here. Not many crazy uh, shortcuts uh, here at Hardpack, but just very difficult movement overall. A little too far to the right, as you can see. If you enter that turn just right, like holding forward, you can like snake through the whole turn. 
a little too far to the right as well here. Not big of a deal. In the uh, championship mode, if you don't have like there's specific upgrades that you need, if you go across the water, you'll, you'll go super slow. But the storm slide just flies right through it. Really want to stay away from the right side over there. That wall will grab you. Now, that's a stun, surprisingly. We haven't seen one yet. This one, you just land really awkward. Yeah, that was a pretty good turn. Ooh, there's a sign. <laughs> the sign of doom. Lost many runs to those signs, just launching me in the wrong direction. Uh, I took that a little slower than I needed to. Very nice. A decent time would be like a 2.15, so just put that into perspective. <laughs> On to Eagle Ridge, my favorite track. A lot of fun movement and plenty of shortcuts to show off. Uh, the perfect start here, kind of like Kodiak Canyon. We got the live to the right first and then beer to the left. Take out every sign along the way. It is possible to. Uh, have that caution sign launch you forward. But it's very difficult to get. You have to be like right on the edge of the collision box. Where's the bunny? Gives you 7,500 points. Really good for the Open Mountain Championship. So here is the boulder clip shortcut into the rock climb shortcut. Those two together save like four seconds. Coming up to the rock hop shortcut here. Took a little wide to the left. Um, there is actually a checkpoint right in front of the finish line. And if you do not cross that checkpoint, the whole lap will not count. And there's no backing up or anything. Ooh, nice. On the third lap, I'll show off the train track jump. There's a shortcut off to the left where you have to jump across and land on the train track that I just crossed there. Oh, we almost took out the bunny. Now I'm trying to snake, as you saw, I just try to snake across that bridge. If you do it at just the right time, you can, uh, you can get a top speed of 62 miles per hour. If you're bouncing around, you're around. 56, 54. Much better rock hop. So let's try to do the train track jump here for you guys. Off to the left. Ooh, so close. <laughs> it is not a traditional shortcut that people go for. I have not put an end to any runs, neither has anybody else. But if you're looking for some time save, it can save you about a second. Really good. Really good rock climb there. You have to wait for your sled to be tilted back just slightly. If you go into it like with your sled like tilted forward, you'll just be uh, popped out. 250 is not bad for a big crash. It's not bad at all. One of those games, just watching it, it's just like, ah, this looks easy. Trust me. Glacial Grind has a really fun perfect start here. 
have to hold forward, hold right and lean at the same time. Avoid hitting that wall. Not the perfect. I didn't get 103 off that, but still decent. It's actually possible to clip inside that igloo without uh, breaking it. Call that the igloo club. It's only me and uh, world record holder for this category named Churcher. We're the only ones to get inside. Coming up to the full jump here. We might crash. Yes, I knew it. I was too far to the left and not far enough over that jump you just flip. Say hello to Manny. Boat jump. Snake that turn. Very nice. Try to get the full jump for you guys. Ooh, we're very close. As you can see, we're trying to avoid those jumps. Least amount of air time. More time save. Nice. And for this slope right there, I'm actually holding back so that my sled doesn't clip into the uh, slope there. There we go, that's how you're supposed to do it. One of those jumps that harder than it looks. You actually have to hold back at the same time you're going off the jump. If you don't, you will not have enough air time. A little pinball in there. Lots of pinball. Ooh. These polygons, dude. They're not liking me this morning. And yeah, mastering the movement for this game. I think it's impossible. You have to be very aware of how the physics works. Nice full jump. Well, we're about to lap somebody. Who is this? Nadia. Oh. She psyched me out because she went to the left there. I've never seen her do that. Oh. Now we still beat her. Still beat her around the turn. That's Glacial Grind. Not my best performance there, but... You gotta see it. <laughs> Goat's Bluff, everybody's favorite track. Track is long and doesn't have many crazy, has one super crazy shortcut that I'll attempt, but no promises. Nice. Nice, okay. Far so good. Avoid going off that jump. Nice. Coming up to the goat's pass shortcut here. Say hello to the goats. Nice. You have to take a specific angle to get that if you want to uh, make it without slowing down. If you go into it too sharp, you'll just flip over. This turn used to scare me as a kid because I would fly off the edge there. Doesn't happen very often anymore. All right, coming up to the goat climb shortcut. It's like the rock climb at the Eagle Ridge, but 10 times harder. Yeah, didn't get it. <laughs> Trust me, 10 times harder. I'll try it one more time. Yes, yes. I mean, it doesn't matter now, the run would be completely dead, but uh, that's where runs come to die. If you do it just right, um, without much stall, you can save like three seconds, but 
I'm crazy, I go for it for my runs, because I don't have really good movement for snaking. But the world record holder, Churcher, he doesn't even need it. He gets good times here without it. Plus, you can... It's really hard to do it with the 800cc. Storm Sled is uh, more capable of it, because it has a smaller hitbox. And some people may say, oh, that's a skip. You're not using any checkpoint manipulation. And it's not wall riding. You just happen to go in between a wall for like a second and it just pushes you out. And then you just use the traction to drive across it. Not going to go for it on the third lap. The fact that I got it for you guys is cool. Probably under 25% chance that I... Get it. I did not like that angle. If you're too close to that rock, the rock will just eat you, literally. <laughs> you'll just go in, you'll clip in between the two, like, walls and the rock, and you'll just go down. Janky physics makes for a fun racing game. Right. Now, if we didn't crash on the first goat climb, we would have had a decent time. But hey, I got it. Not many people can do it. On to Perilous Pass. People love this track. I love this track. Uh, it's pretty short, though, in this category. There's a big shortcut that we call the Perilous Pass. A lot of controversy in the community if it was uh, considered a skip or not, because it's so, such a big time save. So right here, jump across, right across this wall here. Jump across, oh no! Hold forward, hold forward, hold forward. No. We'll get it again. We'll get it again. Thought I had enough traction. All right, all right, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't worry, don't worry, guys. I've done this before. There we go. Jeez. The other racers are like, where do you come from? Oh. <laughs> But yeah, if you don't get it on the first try, you fail it, that's like seven seconds lost, so the run would be dead at that point. Definitely not as difficult as I was making it look. There's a lot of like invisible collision behind you. So you have to avoid that. And that was the one area in which uh, submarining is used which you like snake so deep that you go underground. Let's try to get this a little smoother. Traction please, thank you. That's how it's supposed to be done. That was pretty deep in the ground there. Yeah, but this track is really good for uh, if you're trying to get some high scoring High scoring uh, races, this is has the most jumps for it. All right, let's see if we can get a summary in here. Not bad, not bad. Needed to nosedive a little earlier. <laughs> no! Why, bunny, why? <laughs> really? It's all because I killed the bunny. All because I killed the bunny. There we go. Wow. We're out of there though. Only one more track after this. Definitely not my best performance. Comparable <laughs> paths. I could blame it on Jay though. I don't usually race with him, but.
All right. On to Lost Peak, the last track. But the uh, actually has the hardest shortcut. It's the last track. Got Rob Zombie in the background. You won't hear it, but playing right here in my heart. Perfect start. Very nice. Got that 103. Alright, this is called the Leap of Faith shortcut. First try, baby. Woo! Just gonna send it. And then another shortcut, we just call this the Lost Peak shortcut. Because it's pretty much free. Easy to do. If you don't do that shortcut, uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. You go around that turn. We call it the turn of shame. There's like three jumps around the turn there. We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. Please don't spawn me on the other side. Oh. That was a skip. If you spawn on the other side, that was checkpoint manipulation because I wasn't actually on the other side. So, technically I have to restart the race. What do I mean technically? I did restart the race. Okay, there's a backup. Nadia? I have to go over here and I'll just spawn me back up. That's right. Okay, just don't accidentally skip. And it's the hardest, it's one of the hardest shortcuts for a reason. Goat climb is the hardest, but uh, Leap of Faith is right there behind it. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. It's reached the point of no return. We could just show off all this great level design though. We'll try it in the third lap. Perfect rise. I mean, like 95% of run. If, if you can get past the goat climb, the leap of faith will usually claim the run. <sighs> so close. So close. So close. Are you kidding me, Garrett? Forget about it. <laughs> Dang. I'm gonna blame it on Jay again. I'm gonna blame it on Jay. If we can do the uh, wing jump. Churcher is probably crying right now. <laughs> Why, Garrett? Why? Oh, I still managed to uh, pass Travis. And time's coming up. Horrible time coming up. <laughs> so that was uh, quick races over mountain no skips a uh, very difficult run um, especially the leap of faith um, for in-game time I would subtract 3 minutes and 16 seconds 
that's how much my load time. And that would still put me pretty, pretty far off the leaderboards. My best time is at 18.03. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what a skip actually looks like. Other than the checkpoint manipulation that I just did. But yeah, if you're looking for a racing game with super challenging movement, crazy physics, Sled Storm is the game. So I'm going to show you guys these. what a skip looks like, a wall riding glitch. Go up here. Flip in between these two walls, and we can ride up. Top of this barrier here, spin around, drop down, and that's a lot. And I'll show you guys uh, one more. This one requires a uh, backwards wall ride. It's gonna be a uh, perilous pass. Wait, I have to use. Uh, He's Jackal because he's the uh, he has the power overs. And Perilous Path. This is the only one that requires you to get into a wall right backwards to save time. This would be used in the skip category. Right at the start, we just turn around right here, back up into this corner, go up into this wall. Oh. Here towards the castle, and crash. So the game thinks the only way we could have crashed at that height is that we were at that point in the track. One more time. Might have got pushed out. Ah, still worth. But yeah, the current uh, world record for the no skip category is a 1741 by Churcher, which is insane. <laughs> He's just got really good movement with the 800 CC and. Uh, all props to him, man. If he would only get a mic, he would probably be the one showcasing the run, so. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, showcase this run. Very underrated game. Very difficult game. Uh, make sure to donate. This is just a really awesome event. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Thanks, guys.